Y'all know what time it is. Black bandana. Two black MMA journalists. Yeah, it's time for Black Market Picks. I'm your host, the master of Black Necro Jitsu, Lil Ross Stephan. Today, of course, I'm joined by my co-host, Divine Prodigy, a.k.a. Travis Clark. And we're going to be bringing you all the top picks and plays in not 10 minutes. We're going to probably do about 20 minutes today because there is no MMA or Fantasy Podcast. Um... Four, UFC 229 could be Nurmagomedov versus Conor McGregor. Uh, this is absolutely uh, the biggest fight ever from a DraftKings standpoint. Why is that? There is a hundred dollar, a hundred thousand dollar top prize uh, in the uh, ten dollar contest this week on DraftKings. That's absolutely the biggest prize by about seventy thousand dollars, I think. Has there ever been, maybe there was a $50,000 contest sometime back? I don't remember, though. But I'm thinking this is the biggest contest that I can think of in recent memory. Uh, This is just humongous. $100,000 for the top prize. Uh, Here on Black Market Picks, we're going to try and get you as close as possible to taking that down if we don't take it down ourselves. Uh, The price ranges for this week, we're going to give you all the top plays in each one top mid and bottom 9.4 to 8.7 K 8.6 to 7.7 K and 7.6 K and below that's the bottom tier let's just start off with Javis Clark this week let's switch it up uh top tier 9.4 K to 8.7 K what's your top tier looking like Javis Clark UFC 229 for the top tier I gotta go at number three Sean O'Malley I know he's facing Jose Quinones um, Sean O'Malley has a lot of uh, steam, um, the full momentum, but Jose Quinones also has momentum as well. He's won his last four fights. Um, Sugar Shane, Sugar Sean O'Malley, um, he he's active. He's active. He's so active. You know he'll throw strikes. Um, and for the most part, I definitely agree that he should win this fight. My only worry here is that if he doesn't finish. Um, Jose Quinones hasn't been finished in UFC yet, and um, he seems pretty damn durable at least. So it's like if Sean O'Malley can't get that finish, like he didn't get, like he didn't get the finish against Andre Sukumtath, then how many points will he score? Will it be another seventy pointer from Sean O'Malley? Because you know it's really just going to be just strikes. I don't think he's going to actively look for the takedown. Um, I don't think he actually wants to go to the ground with Jose Quinones. Not saying that Jose Quinones is anything special on the ground. I just think Sean O'Malley wants to keep it in his world, which is standing. So I mean, it'll be a high, it'll be a, a, a high-paced fight. Um, it'll be an action-packed fight. I don't doubt that. But will Sean O'Malley pay off that price tag of nine point two, nine point two against Quinones? And um, you either could put it in a bid for Quinones to win. I mean, he's like I said, he's been on a roll. He's not terrible. He's he's decent. Um, but yeah, that's you gotta just trade carefully with that. But in this top, in this tier, he's gonna be number three for me. Number one, I mean, number two is gonna be Alexander Volkov. I don't see how he loses to Derek Lewis. Derek Lewis just came off a stinker, where of course they were both scared to strike. They respected each other's power a little bit too much. Um, him against Francis Ngannou. But Alexander Volkov, we know he comes with the punches. Um, now, of course, you have to worry about Derek Lewis swinging one of those big punches and getting um, Volkov up out of there. But I just think the pressure and the volume for Volkov will be there and be there in bunches. Um, I, I, I do not see, outside of a puncher's chance, how Derek Lewis wins this fight. I have no idea. I have absolutely none. So for that, I think he's in a, a smash spot, Alexander Volkov, at number um two. At number one, I'm going to have to go Tony Ferguson. Um, this is his first fight back from since he's been doing whatever the hell he's been doing to where he hurt himself. I think it was kicking trees. I don't fucking know. Um, but it's against Anthony Pettis. And, of course, that's a very name opponent. But And you might say Anthony Pettis is back. I know he's been on resurgence as of late. But... I'm not buying it. Tony Ferguson is not letting anyone is not letting anyone screw this up for him. I think Tony Ferguson will bust Pettis up on the feet and then take him down and 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 sub him and sub him out. This fight will be very very good. It'll be very very good. However, I just think that um Tony Ferguson with the aggression 
um, not giving a fuck if he gets hit, walking through Anthony Pettis' punches, walking through Anthony Pettis' kicks if they should land. I just think the pressure for Anthony Pettis would be too much. We've seen Anthony Pettis struggle with pressure before. I think Tony Ferguson is going to pressure him. He's going to be unorthodox. He's going to throw strikes from different angles that Anthony Pettis won't see coming. He's going to hurt him on the feet. I'm going to call with an elbow. And then on the ground, he's going to rear naked choke him. And I, I think I love Tony Ferguson for his activeness, whether it's on the feet or on the ground. Wherever it takes place, Tony Ferguson is a complete fighter. So I love him for his, his, his um, point upside there. Yeah, number one, Tony Ferguson. Very, very interesting, Divine Prodigy. But let me just get into my top tier right now. Um, 9.4 to 8.7K. My top overall play uh, in this price range is going to be one, Sugar Sean O'Malley. Uh, I know that a lot of people may not like it, but I think that O'Malley is highly active. Um, the only reason I, I don't, I, he, he kind of lagged in that fight against Sukumta is because he hurt his, uh, he hurt his leg or whatever. And Sukumta is defensively effective too, but O'Malley is super active. He has the potential to put up a super big score. He also could kind of bomb out here. So, you know, maybe, maybe I'm being a little too ambitious with this, but I, 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 I think he's all, he, he can go for takedowns. Uh, he's going to be super active and creative with his striking. And Quinones, uh, he isn't, let's say like with Tony Ferguson, he and Anthony Pettis. I don't, I think that O'Malley is going up against some of the least, um, the least resistance here uh, in this contest. So I really like Sugar Sean O'Malley at $9,200. My number two overall play in this price range is going to be Alain Patrick at $9,100. He is a grappler. Scott Holtzman is a well-rounded fighter, but he can be taken down again and again and again. And uh, Patrick is just the kind of guy to do it, especially as I think Holtzman is good enough gra a grappler to get back on his feet. Not, not He's not going to get just taken down and held down. I think he's the kind of guy to get taken down, get back up, get taken down, get back up, get taken down, and then release and then make. So he might give up like two or well anywhere between two and four takedowns around possibly uh so i love alan patrick at ninety one hundred dollars my number three overall play in this price range is going to be dominique reyes at eighty nine hundred dollars open st crew is uh here and there reyes is an absolute beast I was wondering what he was going to, uh, how, how tough he was when he put Jared Cannonier away. That, 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 that confirmed it for me. That sealed the deal for me. Dominique Reyes uh, is, is absolutely devastating, just like his name would imply. All right, I'm going to switch it up a little bit for this mid-tier. It's going to be 8.8 .8 to 7.8K, and uh, I'm going to go first this time. I'm going to let Travis go second or Divine Prodigy go second this time. My number one overall play in his price range uh, is going to be one Conor McGregor because I think he'll win the fight. Um, I know that might sound kind of crazy. Well, it's not crazy, but most people going with Khabib, rightfully so. But I'm going with McNuggets in this case. He's my number one overall play. My number two overall play is, of course, you don't have to guess, 8,400 uh, Khabib Nurmagomedov. This fight is it's because this fight is going one of two ways. Either Conor McGregor is getting the early KO sometime within the first two rounds, or else Khabib Nurmagomedov is going to probably dominate him for the duration of the fight. Don't know if he'll find a finish. Um, Connor could find a finish late, possibly. I doubt it, but that could present itself. But Khabib uh, is absolutely in a smash spot here as uh, Connor McGregor, if he can't get, like I said, if he can't get it finished early, he gets tired late and uh, Khabib should be able to put up a million gazillion points in a victory so i mean i'm gonna do a few extra picks in this price range be just because of the fact that those are the two obvious plays here uh alexander volkov is gonna be my number three overall play in this price range i absolutely love him against Derek lewis he's uh he's better than Derek lewis everywhere Derek lewis has about a puncher's chance and nothing else and um my uh, uh number four play 
in his price range, I'm going to go with Felice Herrig against Michelle Watterson. I think that is a key fight overall. So I guess we could say Michelle Watterson is in there. And then I also like Tanya Evinger at $8,000 against Aspen Ladd. I just don't think Aspen Ladd is really that good. Evinger is a crafty vet, and she's definitely the better grappler. So that's my mid-range. I, I mentioned all those fighters because I think this is a key range. Uh, Travis Clark, what does your mid-range look like this week? For the mid-tier, um, this tier is kind of a little weird because pretty much in that tier, everyone's facing each other. But um, for the mid-tier, I got number three, I have Sergio Pettis. Um, Sergio Pettis very much impressed me with his win over Joseph Benavidez. I know some sharps definitely called that out. I figured he was going to win. I didn't think Joseph Benavidez, you know, I don't think he just has it anymore. Well, maybe he has it, of course. He's still Joe, Joe B, but um, he doesn't have it against pretty much anyone up and coming. He can squander those that are not top 15, I would say. Or maybe, no, 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 not top 10. Not top 10, I think Joseph Benavidez can still beat. But um, once you get to the top five or anything like that, like um, Sergio Pettis is, I don't think he can do it anymore. Um, but Sergio Pettis' is striking is definitely on point. And that fight, he did shrug off some takedown attempts and... We know with Formiga, um, who Sierra Silva's Formiga, um, he he's pretty much you know a um, a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy. So it's like Sergio Pettis can game plan to just stop the takedowns, and he's shown that he is capable of stopping the takedowns more so than his brother, of course. But um, stop the takedowns, and who's Formiga's striking isn't anything to write home about. Where we know Sergio Pettis wants to keep this in his wheelhouse on the feet. Um, I don't like the fight too much from a DraftKings perspective, but in terms of just giving you plays of a win in terms of a cash game play, I think Sergio Pettis is a great um, cash game play. Um, you know, just just with the striking acumen that he can have, he's I don't think he's going to finish Formiga at all. I don't think Formiga's going to finish Sergio Pettis at all. But I do think Sergio Pettis will get a very technical decision win that just it just really picks apart Formiga to where Formiga will probably be on the ground trying to pull guard or trying to welcome Pettis to join him down there in which Pettis will, you know, not oblige, of course. But something like that, a victory kind of sort of like that, which I don't think is pre- going to be pretty high scoring. Um, number two, I'm going to have Felice Herrig. I actually like Felice Herrig. Um, I like her a lot. I know she lost her last fight to Carolina Kovacavich, but, you know, Carolina Kovacavich is top five. Um, even though Jessica Andrade just knocked her ass out with one punch. But Jessica Andrade is top five. But Felice Herrig is definitely top ten to me. Michelle Watterson, um, I always felt she was a little overrated. She's had some very um, decent performances in the UFC. But I feel with this, she can get grounded. She, um, Michelle Watterson can be t- taken down. I think Felice Herrig is going to take her down. I don't think Felice Herrig will play on the feet. She might, you know, use it just to set up a few of her strikes. But I think Felice Herrig here has a strength advantage and I just don't think um, Michelle Watterson is is talented enough on the ground, at least just in my opinion, to um, the karate hottie. I don't think she's talented enough on the ground to um, to really hang with Felice there. And I know um, in Michelle Watterson's fight, they tend to be a little sometimes entertaining. So this could be a little sneaky fight to, you know, um, watch, you know, as far as the, the, the ground scrambles as well. Um, Michelle Watterson likes to make these fights fun. And Felice Herrig is always a game opponent. But I just feel the um, the takedowns and the ground control for Felice Herrick for 8.3 will, will be enough to justify paying that price on her. And like I said, I think she actually can do a decent, a decent, um, a, put up a decent score. Like she's, she's somebody I'm really, really considering, especially when you have a this big card where probably people won't, won't even look at the female's way, the female's way kind of like that. I mean, like that, I'm saying, as often. But um, I definitely like that play. And number one, you're going to have to, of course, you know what's going to be. You're going to have to interchange them. But I'm going to go Khabib. Just me personally think who I think is going to win. But, of course, you can interchange that with Conor McGregor because the fight is the fight you must have on your lineups. Um, whoever wins is putting up a massive score. If it's going to be Conor, more than likely he's going to KO. Uh, Khabib, and if it's gonna be Khabib, more than likely he's going to wrestle fuck the shit out of Conor McGregor. And if he's wrestle fucking the shit out of Conor McGregor, he's going to score points. And if Conor McGregor knocks out Khabib, he's going to score points. We've seen Khabib, you know, hurt a few times on the feet at least. 
against um, Michael Johnson, where, where, where it showed off that speed deficiency, that speed deficiency between the two. And that was the first time I actually, you know, might have seen um, Khabib actually be in trouble. I know uh, against Ali and Kenta, he um, Ali and Kenta hit him pretty good as well. But I mean, it's, it's so far. Khabib has shown the, the, the chin that's needed to be shown to take prove that he can take these punches. Now, I know Conor McGregor definitely hits harder than probably Michael Johnson and Ian Kenta. He probably definitely hits harder than him, than them, but Khabib wrestles bears. You know, <laughs> it's like that's, that logic doesn't really apply here, but I'm just saying that I believe that Khabib can walk through the left cross or the right hand of Conor McGregor. I just think that moment Khabib just touches a leg or any body part of um, McGregor, it's over. He's going to chain wrestle. Um, if he if Conor McGregor defends the first one, you know he's going to come with an uh, you know uh, Khabib's going to come with another one. I just think it'll it'll be. I think Khabib will make it to where Conor McGregor is exhaustingly tired, and he will just play with that man the same way he just sort of. Um, the same way he plays with everyone else, where he talks to him while he's just beating him up. And this is my opinion, of course. I've seen some some pretty sharp betters that I actually respect, you know, all on Conor McGregor and stuff like that. But I just don't see it happening. But, of course, you have to play both sides of this fight because anything can happen in the fight game. Um, but, you, like I said, if Conor wins, you you know you know what's going to be what's up because I don't think Conor wins a decision at all. So you know what it's going to be. And at 7.8K, he's going to pay it off regardless. And, um... Even with his output, like Connor's gonna pay that off regardless. So one of these two guys are bust. They must be in the lineup, honestly. Travis, give me your bottom tier cool real quick. Who are your top plays? And last but not least for the bottom tier, number three, I'm gonna have to have Jose Quinones. Now, um, I actually think Jose Quinones win. Um, no, he doesn't win. I don't think he wins. Um, but I definitely think he has a shot. Um. We, at least to my knowledge, we haven't seen too much of Sean O'Malley off his back. I think Jose Quinones could definitely put him there and test Sean O'Malley out in that area. And um, if, you know, if it turns out that Sean O'Malley is flailing on his back, then we, we, could, have a, we could have ourselves a recipe here. But um, like I said, I still think, I think Sean O'Malley is, you know, um, I think he has some 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 ground chops as well. But I'm just saying as far as a, you know, for this range and the price range we have, Quinones very well could pull off an upset and, you know, just take Sean O'Malley down, you know, realizing that maybe his striking, you know, on the feet isn't as up to par as Sean O'Malley's is. So, you know, take him down to to to, to a level that where Quinones is comfortable at. And I definitely think he can do that. And for that price. If he does do that, and with all the hype that is surrounding Sean O'Malley, we could, you know, be in for a low-owned play that, you know, busts a lot of people up up top. And especially for this $100,000 tournament, you have to differentiate yourself. And that's what I'm here to do. Um, so Jose Quinones could definitely be a, a play for me. Um, number two, I'm going to go another, you know, shocking route. And I'm going to go the lowest fight on the card, Jalen Turner. Now, you know, from the... I've seen his contender series fight, and um, to me, I, I, it's kind of it just makes me wonder: What did Dana White see in Jana and Jalen Turner to put him in this fight against Vicente Luque? We know Vicente Luque is a killer. I know he's a killer, but what did Dana White see from Jalen Turner that proves he's? Vicente Luque ready like he could have gave him you know a tune-up fight you know maybe showcase him but I mean even then Jalen Turner wasn't awarded the contract after his fight anyway I think because uh the fight was overdue to a doctor stoppage anyway however both Jalen Turner both Jalen Turner and um Vicente Luque are both technical strikers however they both are there to be hit as well so I definitely think this fight will be action-packed um, they're both, like I said, they're both hittable, hurtable, well, hittable on the feet. But I, I think in that case, you know, Vicente Luque, you know, even though he's, he, he's, you know, he's done better in the UFC, he still was what coming onto the show, onto the, sh the, the ultimate fighter show that he was on. He was still like 11 and eight. 
Now, he definitely, he's definitely much better, so please don't get me wrong. But I'm just saying, Jalen Turner, if it's going to be a stand-up striking affair uh, between two technical strikers, I've seen Jalen Turner take some hits. Um, I've seen him take some punches flush on his face. I don't think he has a chin issue. I think this fight could be one where it's basically just a letdown spot for Vincente Luque because we all know what we expect Vincente Luque to do. I mean, we're all not expecting Jalen Turner to just come out here and beat the hell out of Vincente Luque. We're expecting Vincente Luque to do what Vincente Luque should do against this this just guy. It's just, he's just a guy. So it's like Vicente Luque's resume versus Jalen Turner. Who is Jalen Turner beat versus, hey, look at who Vicente Luque is beat. So it's kind of like, you know, we have this foregone conclusion that, oh, yeah, Vicente Luque is a lock and he very well could be. But when you're playing in a tournament with $100,000 up top for the first prize, you have to differentiate. And Jalen Turner, the lowest price guy on the card, which we've seen before some lowest price guys on the card pull off those upsets and, and win a GPP. I know namely um, TJ Dillashaw when he won the title against Henan Burrell. Um, that's just off the top of my head, but I know there's been plenty more. But we've seen stuff like this happen. Jalen Turner very well could, you know, just put on a great fight, get a decision, could possibly hurt Vicente Luque. I'm just throwing it out there. And I will have some shares of Jalen Turner because I this I'm, I'm I'm the one telling you motherfuckers it. So I, I clearly believe that it can happen. I've seen the tape. They're both like I said. They're both technical. Um, Jalen Turner he definitely has a little bit more defensive problems than Vicente Luque, but they both you know are there to be hit. And I think in that type of affair, it's pretty much um, who wants it more. And I don't think Jalen, Jay, I think Jalen Turner knows that this is an opportunity of a lifetime. And I think that Dana White or who, who's ever match making him up, Eric um, Maynard, I mean, um, Mickey, whatever, whatever their names are, um, Mick Maynard. Um, it was a reason that Vicente Luque got Jalen Turner, which would be considered a step down for Vicente. But for Jalen Turner to get this opportunity, I just don't think he'll easily allow it to go to waste. And number one. It's going to have to be OSP. I actually think OSP wins the fight. Dominic Reyes, who has he beat? He's beat Christensen, Kimball, and Jared Cannonier. OSP would beat those same people. And probably in the same similar dominating fashion that Dominic Reyes is. OSP is a premier gatekeeper for this light heavyweight division. Um, if you get by OSP, you're probably something in the um you're probably something in the UFC but not too many people have gotten by OSP and he's he's even proven that even when he's losing even when he's losing like against Corey Anderson even when he's losing that he can you know come back and pull out a victory or those those fucking Von Prue those Ovin same Prue jo- chokes that he do on the ground or you know I mean granted Corey Anderson you know has a chin issue but you know it's just still that come from behind spirit where you he was losing and he just came back and won Dominic Reyes, uh, I mean, I just don't feel like he's ready for this type of, this type of, like, this is, like, not a final boss test, but this is, like, the final boss is, like, fucking mini assistant. Like, okay, like, John Jones is the final boss. Let me send an OSP. You get by OSP, maybe you're ready. Some shit like that. But I just don't think that Dominic Reyes gets by OSP. I think OSP is a tough fight. Uh, he's a tough fight for anybody, but Dominic Reyes is a guy who... It's taking a considerable step up in competition now from Jared Cannonier to OSP. Like, come on. I, I don't. How is it? How is this price this far off? 7.3 to 8.9. I mean, I don't get it. I don't get it. But I will take it. I think OSP can. He still has power on the feet. He still has some wrestling. Um, He can still lock up a submission. Um, I don't know. I just think we might be overrating Dominic Reyes. So. OSP is number one for me, and I actually think he gets the W. Okay, let me get my bottom tier cracking here in the bottom tier. Okay, my top overall play, that's 76K and below. It's Juicy A for Amiga. Uh, I absolutely uh, love him against Sergio Pettis here. I think he's got the best chance to win of any of the guys in this uh respective price range i think he could definitely 
pull off the upset uh, no problem. My number two overall play in this price range of $7,500 is going to be the Black Beast, Derek Lewis. It's not because I so much really think he has a super great chance to win. It's more because of the fact that, I don't know, you always just have to play Derek Lewis. Um, you just have to because he's always live. And for God's sakes, as ugly as it was, he does have a win over uh francis and ghana which only him and stipe myosis can claim um claim uh blade claim to uh curtis blades wasn't even able to step in and defeat francis and ghana i know much didn't happen but Derek lewis is a serious player in the heavyweight division and you always have to respect that he's always always in play he is a must play in gpps always so he's my number two overall play in his price range and he should be pretty popular and uh my number three overall play and uh this respective price range i'm gonna go with uh i'm gonna go with uh anthony pettis anthony showtime pettis 6900 that might seem strange you say oh tony ferguson is gonna eat him up he's gonna beat him up tony ferguson uh he didn't always 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 land a whole bunch of takedowns as a matter of fact statistically he hasn't landed a takedown since, the, at least as recorded by Fight Metric, since the one against Gleason T. Bow one, two, three, four, five fights ago. So I'm assuming this fight is going to be highly active. It's going to stay standing. And at $6,900, uh, Anthony Showdown Pettis is a live dizog. I like him a lot. I, I really like him. Uh, because I think he can put up a respectable score. And if none of these dogs win, uh, he could be somebody that's on a winning lineup. I don't know if it'll be very contrarian, but I like him uh, a good bit in his price range. Who else do I think is live in his price? I think Scott Holzman is live. He could possibly be Alan Patrick. He's, uh, he's the better striker. If he could keep it standing, he could definitely outstrike Patrick. Uh, Ovin St. Prue might be able to do something against Reyes, maybe. Tony Martin is live. Um, I think those guys are live. I think we got a lot of live dogs in this price range. Uh, but it's going to be tough. It, it, it's the bottom tier that's really going to define who gets the, to the top of this $100,000 contest this week. That's going to do it for Black Market Picks. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll be back, of course. Uh, oh, shit. I guess in two weeks because we're a week early for this one. For the next UFC card, whenever that may be, uh, go ahead. If, uh, if you're not enrolled in the school of Black Negro Jiu Jitsu, go ahead and do that. How do you do it? Hit the subscribe button on whatever platform you're listening to right now. All right, guys, uh, that's gonna do it for this week's episode. Enroll now in the school of Black Negro Jiu Jitsu is free. Peace out.